Well, to discuss everything that's going on in Gaza in a little bit more detail, we're joined on set by Rabbi Yisrael David Weiss. He's a spokesperson for the Orthodox Jewish anti-Zionist organization, Niture Carter. Thank you for joining us. Thank I guess, you. first of all, I've got lots of questions. So if you could summarize for us your feelings on what's going on in Gaza at the moment. Well, with the help of the Almighty, I pray to the Almighty to bestow upon me his truth, his wisdom, that I may be worthy of conveying his message and sanctifying his name and bring peace to the world, inshallah. Uh, it's not my feelings, <clears throat> it's the feelings of Jews around the world who are true to our religion, Judaism, a religion of 3,000 years. Uh, we hurt, we cry, we suffer, we pain with the people of Gaza beyond words, what's happening to them. There is no way of expressing it in our frustration because it's a, to us to double Nakba. It is being done in the name of my religion of 3,000 years by a movement that's a hundred odd years, a political nationalist movement of non-religious Jews, Zionists, who are trying to transform my religion to nationalism and use the religion of subservience to God to cover for their uh, creating a state occupying another people and by silencing anybody who does to speak up as being anti-Semitic. This is abhorrent. It's totally not true. My religion is to serve God. My religion is not to kill us, not to occupy. And, as, and we're not even allowed to have a state since the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago. And Jews held by this belief for 2,000 years strictly. And we lived with the Muslim people <clears throat> in peace these two thousand for the two thousand years we lived in every Muslim and Arab country in peace and harmony. There's nothing to so do I with guess, the religious conflict. There. I guess, Rabbi Weiss, given that, then what are your feelings on those in power in the state of Israel, in particular the right-wing factions there? What do you think of them? We con we consider these uh, sinners criminals. They're using again maliciously and some of them, uh, because they've been conned into this belief, they're using the Jewish religion totally um, <laughs> immorally, wrongly, because, again, Judaism is to keep the Torah, to serve God, as we did for hundreds of years. To occupy, to steal, to uh, create a state is expressly forbidden according to my Torah. All the rabbis around the world for 130 years since Zionism started spoke up in every way, in every style that they had and declared that Zionism is sinful, is, uh, is a criminal and is totally unacceptable according to my religion. I'm just the chief rabbi of Palestine okay. in 1947, before they made the state, pleaded with the United Nations. Uh, his name was Rabbi Dashinsky. Now, when I say the chief rabbi, I mean nothing to do with the Zionists use the Star of David. They use the name Israel. They use all the trappings of my religion, but, and they made a rabbinate and chief rabbi. But we have a Jewish community with a rabbinate, uh, Eid the this God-fearing community. And the chief rabbi in 1947 was Rabbi Dashinsky, a blessed memory. And he pleaded with the United Nations, which is in their documents. He said, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. And since okay. then, we've been demonstrating the tens okay. and hundreds of thousands and being brutally so beaten by the So given that, Rabbi yeah. Weiss, the US president isn't here today to say what he thought. But when he said, Joe Biden said, I'm a Zionist, what, what did you think of that? Well, how did that make you feel? I've been living this uh, bitter pill for the, my whole life. My father, a blessed memory, was a student, was a, a follower of one of the great rabbis in Europe who passed away before the Second World War, who fought tooth and nail, the Zionist movement that started in Europe. And we know these are what the Zionists tell the world. Their a narrative is that they are God's blessing to the world, the, the end of exile what they call it, the beginning of So he's misguided. The it's, U.S. It's, president it's, is misguided. Being, he's listening to the wrong people. 100% either are the best. Uh, uh, they're being misguided, and they mean well for the Jewish people. We're very thankful for the leaders of the world who want to help Jews. My grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. My father escaped the Nazis when they came to Hungary. But we, we appreciate people want to do us good. But on the contrary, the, the support and the furtherance of the state of Israel is only causing as you see, 75 years and more of bloodshed of the Palestinians, that's the mass slaughter that's happening now, and the Jews, 75 years of death and suffering. We live together, Jews and Muslims and Christians, 
in, together in Palestine and around the Muslim world in harmony. What changed? The only issue that changed is the introduction of this political Judaism, this Erzatz Judaism called Zionism. They have created this quagmire. They are the ones who are the patrons, the, the ones who are uh, the cause of endless rivers of blood of both Jews and Muslims and hate that's developed around the world. They are the uh, personification of anti-Semitism that they are claiming on, 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 and uh, accusing others of. Okay, well, I mean, they're not all here to defend themselves. You mentioned Auschwitz there. Something you've said in the past is that you said that Zionists use, and I quote you here, the Holocaust issue to, benef to their own benefit. 100%. Is that what you think is happening here in this, in this war, in the defence of this it's, war? It's, an, it's, it's, it's one link in a chain that they're using constantly since the creation of the state. They use the fact, the guilt uh, of, the, of the world that was silenced that was silenced when my grandparents and others were, were being murdered and people feel uh, guilty and they want to uh, support Jewish people. But on the, what's, what has happening is, so ironically, is that it's not only uh, a, 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 a good for the Jewish people, it is, it is the greatest uh, cancer for Jewish people because first of all, as you see, We've been, uh, we've been estranged from our Muslim neighbors around the world. All the J Jewish communities that were living in Iraq, in, uh, in Tunisia, in Egypt, they're all gone. They're all, and where did they go to? They disappeared because of Zionism. And, uh, and the ones who are living in the Holy Land, um, first of all, they, try, they totally uh, misconstrue what it means to be a Jew. A Jew means to, be, to serve God to uh, keep the Sabbath, keep the Ten Commandments, keep the uh, kosher, all the laws, while Israel proudly announces they're a democracy. You're free of keeping the laws of the Torah. So you see the duplicity, the hypocrisy, and what it means a Jewish is a religion. How could you throw away God's commandments and then claim that you're doing God's will? And, and what's God's will is here when you're murdering in the tens of thousands of people here. We can't be silent on this. Uh, on this, what's happening to the people of Gaza. And, and mind you, I, we really have to point out that when the Jews stood up, we, we're never militant. We never carry guns, our communities. We never carry knives. And, <clears throat> with, and we, the boys and girls get arrested because we refuse to serve in the army. They get brutally beaten. This is already for 75 years. Children, old men, because simply we're standing out on the streets in the, of Jerusalem and saying, this is unacceptable. The occupation is not Judaism. And they don't want to hear that. And they brutally, this is the army for the I Israel. Can, I can if see this, the, yeah, I can understand. If this would happen here in, 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 in Turkey or in the United States, mm. they would be on the plane, Netanyahu, screaming anti-Semitism. Yet they do this with impunity. How come? I can understand the strength of your feeling. I suppose... It should to move to a slightly more practical question then, you presumably then don't believe in a two-state solution. No. So what is the answer to this conflict? What do you see right. as being the, you know, a good outcome from what's happening now? Well, first now? of all, we have to be very clear. There is two distinct issues. For a doctor to uh, prescribe a, a, a medicine, he has to diagnose the sickness. And if they fa he uh, falsely diagnoses the sickness, he can be uh, sued for criminal uh, negligence. The sickness here is not a difference of religion between Jews and Muslims. History attests. Anybody who's, who's older than 75 will remember how we live together in harmony. So it has nothing to do with the distinctly different religions that we practice together. We live together and practice a different religion. The issue is um, a, a, an introduction of a political movement that came from Europe on the heads of the shoulders of the majority Muslims, the second community was Christians, and the third was Jewish, which was God-fearing community, and all three of them did not want this, uh, uh, this uh, new type of Judaism that's going to rule called Zionism. The so State where do you Israel. see it going then? What, what should be the answer or the outcome of this conflict well, in Ghana. Well, Let's so I'm look saying forward. First, we ha anybody, could, we, we could, in order to, uh, to come to a, uh, a solution, the world first has to realize that they're, that they're futilely trying to come to a, a solution because they're trying to solve two religions that are, that are fighting, which is not the question here. The issue is that uh, the, the religions can get along together. Something came along. It's like you're putting a bandage on a hemorrhaging womb. They have to understand that Zionism is the problem. What is 
is the solution. I mean, I'll, now that you under, if you understand the sickness, anybody can come along. And, uh, uh, and I think the, the most practical and logical thing is to remove this, uh, just like apartheid was removed. It wasn't a problem between blacks and whites. It was this concept that the blacks are second-class citizens and that, and we, and that, that it's, uh, they, they have to be um, oppressed. The same thing here. If you remove this oppression of the Palestinians, if you remove this selfish political uh, 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 game that they want to take over the land, then we can live together, Jews and Muslims, and, and we've had for his, why, what's the problem of coexisting? It's just the implementing of a forceful occupation of a, of, of a movement that's calling themselves Jewish. Remove that, we can have a fine Judaism that we had for thousands of years practicing our religions properly and living together with the Muslims who love us. We lived together, they protected us. And we, in fact, as Jews, we have to show gratitude, good to us. It was the Muslim countries that, that gave us a home. And we, and we have to show gratitude to that. That's part of the Nakba, that we, that the, the vilification of people who did good to us. Rabbi Yisrael Dovid Weiss, thank you so much for joining me. It was really good to hear from you, thank you. Thanks.